Um, I was brought on as the director of parks and recreation to to make changes. I was brought on, and I had I had a job that I had to, that I had to do, and that was to bring the department up to where it needs to be. And I don't live in this community. Um, but I can tell you right now that I will do everything in my power to make sure that we are doing the right thing for this community. I don't want to do what we've been doing in the past of just putting band-aids on things. I really want to do it the right way so we can see um, what Luke is seeing. You know, the, the happy people, the cars lined up, you know, just, just happy families, happy teams, all of that stuff. That's what we're aiming for. And sometimes it does have to start from the bottom and come up, but we have a vision and with the team that we have, um, it's definitely gonna move forward. And it has been over the last year. It just takes time to make these things happen. The light situation, we have, um, we have 12 LED lights um, that we are gonna put up there at this point right now. We are kind of in a, a predicament. Um, our electricity that runs from one end of the field to the other end of the field um, has been buried in the ground without, um, without a conduit. And there's a break in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we can't dig up that area because we have also an irrigation system that is in that area as well. And it would cost us way too much money to dig that up. So we're looking at alternatives. Um, Roland does have every, we have everything ordered. Everything's here. We just need to make a plan of how we're gonna run the electricity and do what we need to do. The lights are very old um, and they're not LED lights. Um, Ian, if you want to talk a little bit more about the lights, you're more familiar with those lights than I am. Um, that would be yeah. really helpful. Yeah, I, I was up with Angela a few weeks ago with Roland, and we looked at how to site the new floodlights and, and how that would look. And I've, I've had many conversations with Musco Lighting, who you know do a lot of uh, um, excellent flood lighting options. And, um, and seeing how we can adapt uh, because their costs are, um, unfortunately, extremely high, but they're, they're very high quality. Um, so we're, we're trying to find a way to adapt and use the town's money in the in the best way possible, so that we um, so that we get the maximum. Um, you know, as you guys say, bang for the buck. Uh, I really want to ex to explain the trash situation. Um, for the trash situation, every youth organization that utilizes our field is supposed to empty the trash after every use. That has not happened. Um, and because of that, um, we've, the, the director of public works and water and I have decided that because we're short staffed, we're not able to pick up all the other trash that we were gonna remove the trash cans and make it carry in, carry out. This was also discussed with the president of Noble Youth Baseball. And it was also, discussed with other people um, along with Noble Youth Baseball too, to let everybody know that this was the situation and this was the direction that we were moving in. Um, so that is the carry in, carry out policy that we have established right now up until we can get it under control. Um, I understand that you guys think it's the vandalism, the kids up there, but honestly, it's been a lot of the youth sports organizations while they're up there. Um, and just, I get that the trash cans are heavy, um, but if they were emptied out after every use, we wouldn't have this issue. Um, so we had to instill this. And I understand that some people aren't happy with it, um, but it's, it's where we're at right now. We have been making incredible progress um, with the field. And I know it doesn't look like it. We have updated every irrigation head out there. We have changed the, the system to a Wi-Fi system. So I'm capable of utilizing the irrigation system from my phone. 
Um, and I also have Tom Irwin Associates and Advisories with me, as well as Luke Fernandez, who will be taking care of the baseball fields for us this year. So Luke and Jack, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Sure. Uh, I'm Luke Fernandez. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me here. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and um, for those of you uh, who I don't know, I graduated from Marshwood High School. I uh, played my baseball at Boston College, um, and I am currently working for my father's landscaping company, Fernandez & Sons, and we are out of Elliott. My name is Jack Schmidgall. I'm design and construction advisor for Tom Irwin Advisors, and uh, I'm the person that coordinated the project to uh, rehab the fields over at... Um, it was supposed to be another company, I guess, that... Uh, has done it in the past, but they weren't available. So it was a bit late getting started. Um, Angela contacted me. I was able to resource Luke, and I saw his work down at Winnick Connick in Hampton and was impressed and uh, asked him if he'd be interested in helping out. And um, quite interesting to find out that he already had a history with the, uh, with the town of Berwick through his dad. That worked on the fields years ago, so it was a good match. Yeah, I've spent quite a lot of time at, at the Memorial Park. I played there a lot, um, coming up through from eight all the way through twelve. Um, I I helped my father rehab the field, or we did an update updated the field when uh, Marty McKenna was still involved with the program. Uh, this was before I graduated, um, so I'm very familiar with the park and extremely extremely excited that the town and Parks and Rec has decided to take this direction. Uh, to invest in the town, the kids, and what this community center could ultimately bring. Um, as of Monday, I began the work on field one, and by no later than Saturday do I project the completion of both fields. Uh, we are getting the infield mixed delivery uh, tomorrow, and that should wrap the completion of field one. And the reason we did this is so that anybody who needed to have a field, there would always be one available. So we didn't want to take up the entire complex at once. So at the completion of tomorrow, once field one is done, we will completely leave that area and then move over to the field closer to the new parking lot. Better way to do something is to do it once rather than going back a million times and having to spend more money and more time. Uh, the directive from um, Jack and Angela and Ian was, we want to do this the right way once, establish a quality control program to make sure that we're not bleeding money and maintaining this because there are many ways to maintain a field to defer costs down the line. Um, Jack, Jack and Ian had a long, long history in doing this all over New England um, on beautiful, beautiful parks. But what this is, the, the memorial field, is it's more than just a baseball field. There is softball, there's soccer, basketball, football, and the community that's trying to utilize the space. Therefore, there's going to be a lot of moving parts and not only improving it, but also maintaining it. And that's a collective effort. So one of the things that I'm most excited about the opportunity with Angela is to meet and establish a connection with the different program heads underneath the Berwick Noble Memorial umbrella. Whoever's there should understand what goes into the care of the space. And the advantage that I have is I'm a town over. Um, I live in Rollinsford. I operate out of Elliott. So I'm 10 minutes away from being able to address concern at the field. There is also the un undertone of I've played on the field. I know what it's like to see a community flourish from their athletic departments. And I'm excited that that is the direction that, you, that you're hoping to take. Um, and I take a great deal of pride in that the community that I'm from is looking to push the direction of better and growing and turning into uh, more than just a field that a town that has a field somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. This is going to be a place where not just young athletes are coming, but families are coming, members of the community are there and it's designed to, to benefit all. Jack and I were up there yesterday, establishing the new lines, the edges, the dimensions to make sure that everything is where it should be. From there, the quality control plan that I was referencing will be um, not in one block. I'm not gonna show up once and then you're never gonna see me again. It's meant to be an iterative relationship where as a need comes up, we arise with a solution. Um, it might be 
different year to year, but the overall goal is that every member of the Berwick community that is utilizing the fields understand what goes into maintaining it. And it is well under control of, of whomever it is that that is their task. If it's baseball, if it's football, soccer, t-ball, anybody should know that once I am completed with my practice, my game, that whoever's coming in next is receiving a prepared, a prepared space. It shouldn't be a slow decline until the next project has to, has to show up. Um, if I could reference one thing specifically, um, I don't know if the last time the town had to buy sod for the baseball field or an athletic field. Well, if you rake parallel, if you rake parallel with the edges, the dirt never goes onto the grass. If you rake perpendicular to an edge, then the dirt can easily go into an area that it shouldn't. And over the course of a near, a near window, it would be a much larger task to bring the field back to playable, safe, um, durable. And those are the goals, because what, what can happen very easily is this can become a snowball of money. And that's not what we want. What we want, the, the ultimate goal, and I'm saying I, I apologize, we, is let's have a safe, high level facility for our community to be at. And um, that quality control, how that looks in action is what rake is used for what purpose with a label and a location. It always will be there and then everybody will know how to use it. And that is, again, the benefit of me being in the community. If I don't, if I'm not familiar with somebody, it's probably not too far away that I'll be able to make a connection with them. And what I thoroughly enjoy doing is teaching people the skills that they need to be able to monitor their space, how to mow the most effective way so that grass isn't going into the dirt, how to keep the dugouts clean, how to make it so that the town does not have to find more money for problems that were avoidable. We have to get clearance from MMA right now um, for liability purposes. Um, we have never had a full scope of liability stuff done for our building or our concession stand. At this point right now, they're there are still rats up there. Um, they tend to come in along the irrigation line um, as Luke and Ian have seen. Um, and that's just where they end up burrowing. They burrow right underneath the building right there um, because it's it's got water there. Um, so that's the situation. As soon as I found out we lost all of our stuff last year for summer camp, everything that was in that building was, was a loss um, because of the, the rat issue. Um, so we pretty much started from scratch last year. So now we've had it cleaned out, um, our mowers in there, we have all of our needs are in there, which we're trying to establish as our facilities piece for that field um, and to just make sure that we have all the stuff that we need up there and we're building it one by one. And we've been able to do that um, because of last year, because I came on in January, we had a chunk of money that needed to be spent or it was gonna be lost. And so we really looked at, well, I really looked at what we really needed to do for the whole scope of everything and stepping foot on that field and seeing how sad it was it really needed an uplift. And so talk to um, Ian and everybody else and James, and this was the direction that we were gonna go in to see the bigger vision of that facility, like Luke has said. There should be two dumpsters. There should be a dumpster at 71 and a dumpster at 25 Sweetser. Okay, so although there's not trash cans throughout the park, no. If someone carries in, they don't need to carry it back to their car. They can put it in the dumpster. The dumpsters are not locked, correct? No, they're not. Okay. Um, we've been waiting to to meet with Pave Tech because they're willing to work with us on the asphalt for the playground or for the for the basketball courts and the tennis court and the okay. pickleball court. Um, and we're also meeting with Sebago Tech next week to do a walkthrough so we can have a concept drawn out. Um, we met with them last week, two weeks ago, maybe, 
Um, it was something that I had brought to James's attention because I wanted to have a concept done. And I really wanted an engineer to look at the layout of the land up there to make sure that we were doing everything right. So we don't have to piecemeal things like it has been done in the past, but that we're going to do it the correct way and do it once, like Lucas said. Um, even though he's dealing with the baseball fields, I'm dealing with the basketball courts, the playgrounds. We really need to look at the big scope and look at the vision and make sure it's done correctly. T-shirts are hard to come by right now. And I really wanted to stay local. And I really wanted to work with Devin Dukes. Um, so he's had to order from about 13 different places to get the one color that we need this summer. Um, so it is in the works. It's just gonna take a little bit longer, just like everything else is. I welcome any of you to come and visit the field uh, while I'm up there. Be happy to answer any questions, discuss further while we're there. Um, it's nicer to look at it in person while, while we can talk about it. Um, but to Angela, to Angela's point, yeah, it might be it might be a, a diamond in the rough right now if, we're, if we can use that term. Um, but the bones are there. Everything that's essential to create this broader vision that Angela showed me of how we can use athletic services to bring a better service to the community and have it benefit benefit the greater good. It's all there. Um, the ability to serve multiple sports, tons of parking, concessions. There is no big, big, big missing piece. Um, if you had one field and no parking lot, we'd be talking about cutting down trees, but um, the space is there. The energy is there. Um, I, was, I was brought in when Angela said, I am on a rocket ship. I'd, I'd like you to jump on board. So that's, that's exactly the type of energy that I like to bring to it. Um, so again, I encourage all of you to, to, I would love to have you up to the field, to walk you through it, to, to show you what we have seen and, and discussed, um, because I'm, I'm truly, truly excited for what this can bring. Because let's not forget, I believe there's three Berwick teams right now that are headed to their representative World Series. Sports is, I mean, I know I'm biased, but sports is cool. And it can bring a lot of, of put smiles on people's faces. Let's get, let's have kids on teams on the field. Let's use our, our, our fields. To me, there's nothing uh, more special than 100 cars lined up at a Little League game. I think that's, I think that's a great moment. And that is, that is where I would like this to get to and have it be easily maintained and be a, 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 real, a real key part of the community.